Hello, here we are again with Muki Tenenbaum. We are exploring, as you know already, his philosophy through these videos, his disillusionism, his misalgic theory. And what we are trying to do now is to apply the abstract concepts we've been dealing with to very concrete, very uh, usual situations in everyday lives. Mm, situations we have both, and many of you also, experienced or might experience soon and we are going to try and analyze today a very prevalent aspect of human behavior in our societies which is a pretext which is how we make excuses and make amends with each other so we are going to try to look at this type of behavior from a misalgic point of view from a disillusionist point of view I, I like the make excuses uh, mm -hmm. format of saying things. It will be written pretext, but it's really how do we make excuses? Yes, it's mm -hmm. it's the it's the, the the way we talked about it. Uh, first of all, let me let me divide, let me define and and, and limit the, the 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 scope of the of the concept mm -hmm. of, of an excuse mm -hmm. or a pretext. Okay, uh, uh, what are we talking about? Um, you know, let's say I'm I'm late. Okay, I could see, I could say, and, and, and uh, traffic, traffic is an excuse, yes. The reason, the real reason is that I woke up half an hour late, yes, of course, <laughs> I overslept, that, that will be the reason. Uh, and then I will, I will say, uh, I'm sorry, traffic was, uh, was a mess. Second possibility could be uh, uh, if, uh, uh, I was um, abducted by aliens. And the third possibility is, I started driving and a horse, that was, a horse and a car that was in front of me, the horse died on the spot and I could not move anymore. Why I bring these three possibilities? One is preposterous, of course, it's not mm -hmm. a pretext. Um, the, the first one is a normal one, a common mm -hmm. one. And the second one is not preposterous, but almost, yes. Uh, is it possible? Yes, but uh, not, not really. Um, but before we get into that, I have to make a differentiation from the inside. A pretext must be conscious. I mean, I have to know that what I'm using is a pretext, I'm giving an excuse, and the real reason is either different or it is the same, but less magnitude. You know, uh, traffic was terrible. Traffic was not that terrible. I, I came a little bit late. It could be a mixture, but that is that, that is. But from the inside, from, from the inside of me, I have to know that it is. And the second one, it cannot be part of my narrative. And mm. let me remind everybody what is a narrative. Narrative is the way we see life, yes, the, the way, the, 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 the things that, how we see our life, that is uh, built part on real facts and part of them in things that are not real or they are just, an ideal. I'll give you a, a very common example is, I love my children all day long without any limit. Absolutely, they're the most important, the only important thing in my life. Yes, that is not true. That is part of my, my narrative. And probably I will stick to it and I believe it is true. It has to be not true to me. It can be a flagrant lie, it cannot be a stupid lie, as I said, but that's the reason I wanted just to, to frame it in a place and to understand what happened when this exchange in which I give excuses or somebody gives his excuses to me, as, as we, were, we were going to find out this is the main issue, how do I process it? How do I deal with it? First of all, what do you think, Florencio, on, the, on uh, this? Uh, I I understand how the, the narrative is out of the question here. That would not be a pretext. That would be what I understand to be true, even if, if it, turns, it turns out it isn't. And uh, of course, preposterous fabrications are out of the question here. But what I'm interested in is this relationship you are hinting at, how not only I uh, put forward a pretext, an excuse, but how the other one receives this pretext, because you are presenting it as if it were some sort of transaction, as if there was a, an implicit partnership between the one who 
uses the pretext and the one who receives it. And I, I want to go into that. I think that's a rich field for analysis. Well, in any conversation, there is a, yeah. a transaction. There is, there is some kind of transaction. Mm -hmm. What we are talking about is why do we many times accept mm -hmm. somebody else's pretext? And the answer is several answers. First of all, think as the pretext, not from the egoistical, to call it somehow, the, the, the interest of the one who is giving the pretext. What normally a pretext will have to take in account the other one. If you give a stupid pretext, if you say it's a horse that died in front of me, or is, is it I had a heart attack, but I, I overcame <laughs> it and I arrived here, I'm treating the other person as an idiot. And this is what a pretext should never do. A pretext should be an offering, you know, like the, you offer to a, to a, a primitive god. Well, all the mm -hmm. gods are primitive, but to, to the ones that we used to see in the movies, yes, an offering, mm -hmm. yes, to, to, to the gods, uh, because it is, it is something like that. It is an idea as well, listen, this is a, a good lie. I, I worked on it. It's not just, you know, I didn't care who you are. And that is, that is, that is a good thing. That, that is the beginning of, of that transaction. Now, when I am on the receiving end of it, and this is the important part, is it worth for me? Should, should I really try to unmask, to, 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 to unravel uh, the, you know, to check if there was transit? Yes. Or, or how many horses died today on, on, the, on the road? That was a joke. But I mean, if I had to, if I had to do, or if I, if I show mistrust, because one thing is to feel mistrust. One thing is to, to know that the other one is not telling the truth or to suspect it. But is it worth it? Because normally these are the relations we are talking about are long term. Mm. It, it, it's not, it, it can happen the first year. Of course, somebody can come for a job, uh, uh, you, you know, for a job interview. Uh, this is not what, what I'm talking about. I'm talking about among friends, among families, among the egosphere. Yes, remember the atmosphere, the, those 20, 30 people. So uh, it, it lubricates the relation because if I come and say, listen, I didn't wake up on time, maybe, maybe it's worse. Because what I, although I'm being, I'm coming clean, I'm saying you're not important enough for me to put uh, um, uh, two, two uh, alarms so I wake up. You're not that important. That's really what could be could be seen. So look, truth, it's, it's the truth, it, it's nice. You came out clean, yeah. But in a relationship, that's not the most important thing because we try to avoid suffering. And there is a, a, a possibility here of, you know, avoiding suffering and allow us to go into our, each, each one sleepwalks. Yes, we can sleepwalk with each other instead of breaking that sleepwalk. Remember what will happen if you say, this is not true. That's it. Sleepwalking is out, is, out, is out of the question. Maybe it's good. I'm not saying this is the only <laughs> that this, can, this should not happen, but this is where, where I think we should, we should think about. What do you say, Florencio? Uh, of course, this takes us back to uh, an abstract discussion we've already had in previous videos that has to do with uh, unjustified suffering. For some reason, it's harder to deal with things that have no explanation, even negative things are better somehow if there is a proper explanation for them. And I guess in these cases you are describing, what we are doing is exchanging explanations, justifications that alleviate the pain of a small thing, maybe like uh, waiting for someone who's late. But still, it's not the same if I have a proper explanation of why I've been waiting. That if I'm left with the suffering of waiting completely unjustified, then again, in what you were saying of the relationships within the ego sphere, the relationships that are somehow prolonged in time, and this is where most pretexts, of course, take place, there is also a sort of precedent there. The fact that you have used a type of pretext is something that for me opens possibilities in the future. Listen, oh, so we are pretexting, we are giving and taking excuses. I think it somehow uh, 
frames the future exchanges we are bound to have. And in this direction, I wanted to ask you about a, a larger framing, which is that not, not of our relationship in our ego sphere, but that of the culture we share. I, I'm sure it's not the same to exchange pretexts and excuses in one quarter than in another. There is a, a broader landscape behind, right? Well, yes. In fact, uh, we are speaking here in English, and uh, well, we have, of course, another another of the videos in Spanish, which is mm. for for the Spanish speaking people, which is a very homogeneous culture. Yes, I mean there is really no difference between Spanish speaking people in Spain or in Mexico or in Argentina on this matter. Mm. But when we speak in English, and I know some of our people are, for example, Chinese. Mm. And even like, some are Japanese. And about them, I will tell you a story and, and, and about the difference of culture. I was in China in the beginning of, of the, when it started being open, in the, the beginning of the 90s, end of the 80s, somewhere there. And I, we arrived to, to Shanghai and I went to see the, 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 the hotel manager uh, there. And I, and I said, listen, you have such a beautiful river. They have a huge river. Yes, huge. Uh, I don't remember if it's the Yangtze or the Yellow River. Uh, please forgive me about my <laughs> geography. I, I forgot. But it's a huge and beautiful river. Mm. And I came to him and said, would you mind? I mean, can you get us a little boat to just, mm -hmm. you know, navigate in the river? And the man answered me, oh, I'm very sorry. The river is now being cleaned. <laughs> it was obvious that he should, he, the, the answer was no, that China did not want tourists going around looking at, at that time, yes, at the river. So instead of telling me no, or government does not allow it, he, as a gift to me, uh -huh. told me a lie that, he, that I can accept, although we both know it's not true. Mm -hmm. And he expected me to accept that, that answer. And I, on my, on my side, uh, I'm supposed not to challenge him on that. And I did not, of course. Mm. Uh, I, I did not because I understood the limits of what I was asking. Already, I didn't thought I was not very optimistic about it anyway. <laughs> but, it, but if you go to Japan, the situation is totally different. In Japan, you are not even supposed to need an excuse. Mm. Mm. An excuse is tacit. Let me give you an example. A friend of mine, he was importing things from Japan. And if things arrive late, he was not supposed to tell them it arrived late or it hasn't arrived yet. And vice versa, the money, yes, in this case, the compensation. It's tacit. Think that I already gave you the, the, the pretext. The pretext that is not being said. You live in a, in a post-pretext situation. Mm -hmm. It's like it's the pretext was there. So you have here different cultures Use, seeing pretext in a different way. But in China and in Japan, and especially in China and in Vietnam and other places in, in Southeast Asia, this is a present a person gives you. Mm -hmm. I give you another case. Uh, I, I, we were waiting for a plane to leave to, uh, uh, from China to in, the inside of China. And I come to the guy and says, listen, when is the plane arriving? Any, when is the plane leaving? Any moment. The plane has not yet left the, 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 the place it was coming from. But he didn't want me to feel uncomfortable. It was for me. It was not for him. It was not to, to save his ass, in, uh, as you <laughs> say in, in, in bad English. It was, to, it, it was a, as a gift to you, so you will not be angry. You will not be nervous. It's a gift to you. That's how it's being seen. It's very interesting pretext. It's interesting. It's interesting. But, but I think in general, we come to the conclusion that pretexts and excuses contrary to common knowledge can be very positive aspects of everyday life. Once disillusioned, once considered under a nostalgic point of view, it's something to cherish. Hey, I got a pretext. I got an excuse and it was a good one. It was nicely made. Yes, yes. And, and you feel that there is, of course, they could be absurd. Yes, they could tell you, sorry, aliens um, are all the time um, taking boats out of this river. We, we're running out of boats. That, that doesn't happen. It has to be a bit plausible. And it depends on your ignorance. Of course, you don't know mm -hmm. if they are cleaning the river. If you were a local, 
you probably will know that rivers are never clean. In fact, not being a local, I know rivers are not clean, <laughs> and especially they does not even, not in China. You know that, not in China. <laughs> very good. So we'll carry on with this exercise. Thank you very much. See you, See next, you time. next week. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, comment, and subscribe.